Hello everyone, today I'm here to review a book for you. Today I will be talking about Because You Love to Hate Me, 13, is it 13? 13 Tales of Villainery, and this is edited by Anne Marie, and basically this is a whole bunch of short stories about villains. So doing this video is to tell you what I thought about this book as a whole, and then give you individual ratings for each one of the 13 stories, and letting you know my thoughts and opinions on them. So this book has 13 stories about villains. It's also in collaboration with 13 booktubers. So basically there were each booktuber was assigned to an author and that booktuber and that booktuber gave the author a prompt of like kind of a villainous story they wanted them to write and the author wrote that story. So I will say I will be spoiling the prompt for you because I do want to mention them for each individual story. So in case you don't want to be spoiled maybe don't watch any further when it comes to the prompts but because the prompts are at the end of each individual short story. If that makes sense at all, if you go saying like first we'll have one short story and then at the very end you'll learn the prompt of what inspired the short story. So basically I'm going to tell you what all the prompts are in this review. So long story short, if you don't want to know the prompts, maybe don't watch this video. If you do want to know the prompts and if it's not going to spoil you, continue watching on. I don't think it hurts to know their prompts. I kind of looked at them early too because I'm a big spoil myself person. <laughs> so I looked at them early too for some reason. So I don't think it's going to make or break you already in this book. So yeah, <laughs> I feel this fruit's already going off the place. This book is basically all about villains. My overall rating for this book is I would give it a 3.75 out of 5. I enjoyed most of the stories in it. There were a few that I didn't enjoy, but overall I enjoyed all the stories as a whole. There are a couple qualms I have with this book. Number one, I kind of wanted it to be more villain-esque. In this book I think that's all discovering the notion of good versus evil and the blurry line that it is. What makes a villain a villain? You know, what makes a bad person a bad person? What makes a good person a good person? This book really, you know, discovers the notion of that. So I wouldn't say this is truly 13 short stories about villain. It's kind of about morally gray characters and them towing the line of, you know, good decisions or bad decisions, which isn't a bad thing at all, but I kind of felt like it was pitched as kind of a villainous story. There weren't any short stories in this book that I found particularly like that was an insane amazing villain. But it's some short stories that gave me that Bellatrix Lestrange feel that when I read about that character I was like, you were crazy but I love you. <laughs> I think we all have that feeling with her. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted a little bit more villain-esque to this book. So that's kind of my qualm with it. I just wanted to be a little bit more evil because it is a short story collection about villains. So I don't know like I think I wanted more from it but I was overall happy with all the stories like there were some really solid stories in this book. I recommend this to you. Yes I would. I think it's a I think it's a very solid short story collection but I wouldn't say it's like 100% villainous. Either way I did enjoy it so like I said I gave it a 3.75. That's kind of my overview as a whole. Now I'm going to dive into each individual story and letting you know my thoughts and opinions on them. First up we have The Blood of Emmerville. I can't pronounce that right by Renee. Adie, and I gave this short story a 4 out of 5. The prompt for this one, forgive me as my notes are right here, is a grandson of an evil dictator who tried to rule the universe and wants to follow in her footsteps and kills a sibling in a game of chess. Very very long a prompt. Either way I did enjoy this short story. I do love Renee Adie's writing. I did love her short story. It was a little bit confusing. I didn't understand like the whole history of the whole society but then again you only have like 30 pages to tell your story so you got to get right to it. Either way I did enjoy this one I found the villain to be not like insanely villainous but I did thought I did think that this was a good like beginning to the short story collection I thought it was a solid start so four out of five the next short story we have is Jack by Anne Marie the editor of this book and we have and I also gave this one a four out of five as well the prompt for this one is Jack the Beanstalk meets Phalaris of and I don't know how you pronounce that word. <laughs> I enjoyed this one as well. It was a different take on Jack and the Beanstalk, and I really enjoyed it. It had me guessing. It was kind of villainous. I did like the direction that she took with it, with the whole Jack and the Beanstalk thing, especially the especially the last page in the short story. I thought was amazing. It was another solid short story. Not one of my favorites, but definitely not one of my least favorites. The next one we have is Gwen and Art and Lance by Soman Chanina. I'm pronouncing all this stuff wrong. Um, I gave this one a two out of five sadly and the prop for this one was a modern day mashup of the king of author legend and persephone hades myth and basically this whole short story is a text conversation between gwen and art and lance and it was so confusing <laughs> that was my main qualm with it with text conversations i feel like 
you have to be really have distinctive voices for each one of your characters for me to know exactly who this one I got kind of confused very very easily I also was not a huge fan of the whole plot like I like the matchup idea but I don't think it was executed that well like this one was probably my least favorite of the bunch because I just didn't enjoy it that much it's sad to say but I do love a good texting like part of a story and things like that but I don't know. I just didn't enjoy this one that much. Then we have Shirley and Jim by Susan Denard. I gave this one a 5 out of 5. I loved it. And the prompt for this one it was short and sweet. A young Moriarty who I love. Oh my gosh I love that villain Moriarty. This one basically had a young Sherlock Holmes but it was Shirley Holmes I think. It was Shirley Holmes. Yeah she was like the Holmes and then we have Jim Moriarty. So basically you're learning like the origin story of Moriarty. It's definitely not villain-esque. Like it's not like oh my gosh this guy's maniacal and villain. It was very very interesting because Moriarty's not like your typical villain. He's just kind of a regular guy and he's just kind of very very smart and very very methodical with the way he thinks and I really enjoyed the way she told the story. I think that's why I loved it so much. I just love a good kind of um, Sherlock Holmes retelling and I thought this one was amazing. Definitely one of my favorites of the bunch. So we have The Blessing of Little Ones by Sarah Innie. I give this one a three and a half out of five and this was a Dark Sorcerer's Motives for Seeking's Immortality. I did enjoy this book. I did enjoy this short story honestly. Like I kind of want to read a full novel of this book because I felt like it could have gone on longer but I do feel like it could have been fleshed out a little bit more especially with the characters. I felt like we got the last, the really good action in the last five pages. So this one was like a good, decent short story. It wasn't my favorite, but I will say I would like to see a full length novel of it, as well as Shirley and Jim by the last one I talked about. I would like to see full length novels of both of those. Sea Witch by Marissa Meyer. I give this one a five out of five. The prompt for this one is if the Sea Witch, or Ursula pretty much, had been in the Little Mermaid's shoes, decided to kill the love interest instead and turn back into a mermaid. I love this one. I'm not surprised because I love Marissa Meyer's writing. I loved kind of Ursula. I felt like she was a much more tamer Ursula. Is that right to say? Ursula, the Sea Witch? Whatever. Um, in this book like you're learning little bits about Ursula before she came Ursula. I would have much preferred her to see a little bit more darker and things like that but I do like the end when she got her revenge it's like that girl got it good. <laughs> I like that so I guess one of five out of five. I thought it was a really really good one and I wanted to read more. We have Beautiful Venom by Cindy Pond. I gave this one a four out of five and this prom is also very very short and sweet and it just says Medusa. And I like this one as well. This one definitely tackles um, a very very important topic of rape and kind of you know shaming within that and, and not really trusting women to tell the truth and kind of shaming them for that even though they didn't do anything wrong so I definitely thought it touched on very very important topic. I felt like it could have been fleshed out a little bit more but overall I enjoyed the story that it told and the boldness and the importantness of the story. We have Death Now by Victoria Schwab. I give this one a 5 out of 5. Who's surprised? This is my favorite short story of the whole bunch. The prompt for this one is Hades wakes up after being unconscious at the bottom of a well and I Ireland. I love the way Victoria Schwab wrote this. She has just this beautiful way of writing that is so haunting and mysterious and it really makes you think about death. It makes you think about Hades and the ending like the last page of the short story. It's a very very intense short story. I also will have to say that this was my favorite like because each after the prompt that the booktuber gave each the author, there's a little blurb in there. There's a there's two or three pages that the booktuber gets to, you know, write whatever they want. A lot of them kind of did like quizzes and things like that. Some of them, you know, did a commentary on the story itself. And I really enjoyed Jesse's. Like he was my favorite, you know, one of the bunches of really talked a lot about death and how it's affected him and what he thinks about it. And I found it to be very, very moving and very, very captivating and it really had me gripped. I really enjoyed his. Like I felt like it was very raw. Like I felt like I got to learn more about Jesse as a person while reading his short story or his, you know, thoughts on his prompts. Then we have Mary Gold by Samantha Shannon. I give this one a three out of five. The prop for this one is an Earl Queen retelling in 19th century London. This one was just okay. I found it to be just a average kind of short story. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't like the worst thing I've ever read. Then we have You, You, It's All About You by Adam Silvera. I give this one a three out of five. And the prop for this one is a female teen crime lord 
before concealed by a mask this one I enjoyed but I was very very confused by like the whole dialogue was very very confusing to keep up with I was so confused but I love the overall plot and has a female teen crime lord that was very interesting to me Julian breaks every rule by Andrew Smith I gave this one a four out of five Top for this one was a psychopath and a futuristic setting I really like this one like this is like the beginning like the inkling of a stage of a psychopath like you get to see the very very thought of him like becoming a psychopath I found that very very interesting that this guy was like bad things that I want to have people just happen to people and in the end he decides to take matters in his own hands and I really enjoyed this one like this one I think had the most kind of villainous story to it because it was truly about this guy who was kind of a psychopath. Indigo and Shade by April Genevieve Chicolte and I gave this one a three and a half out of five. This prompt was Beauty and the Beast um, Suitor's Revenge. This one was a decent one as well kind of a middle of the road again for me. I wouldn't say it's like very villain-esque. It was just an interesting story. I didn't hate it but I wanted kind of more from it. The last short story is Sarah by Nicola Yoon which I gave also a three out of five and this prompt was a gender flipped god of war. So it was just okay. I kind of wanted more from Nicola Yoon but I don't think she's used to kind of writing kind of in a fantastical kind of setting you know where it's much different from her contemporary world so I don't know if that had affected at all. Those are my thoughts on all 13 short stories. If you have read this book let me know which ones were your favorite short stories, which one were your least favorites, what did you think about the book overall. Overall I did enjoy it. I do love a good anthology and I feel like this is a solid one. I just kind of want a really really kind of gritty villain-esque like really kind of evil villain story so maybe there will be another one that comes out in the future that kind of focuses on that but either way I would recommend this book it's definitely a fast read because it is short stories and there's so many of them and so many amazing authors so my three favorite short stories this book were Shirley and Jim by Susan Denard um, The Sea Witch by Marissa Meyer and Death Now by Victoria Schwab I'm not surprised about any of them <laughs> Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.